Have you ever wondered about the difference between bugs and beetles? Or is there any at all? We tend to give bugs beetle names and beetle bug names kind of randomly. But is there a difference? Well, for just the fun of it all, we're going to take a look at stink beetles and stink bugs. If we look at the classification and taxonomy of these creatures, there are indeed evolutionary differences. They're common as far as being insects, but that's about where it stops. Because once we reach the order classification, beetles and bugs have distinctive differences. So let's explore some of the main differences between bugs and beetles. First of all, let's take a look at the mouth parts and their diet. When we're looking at bugs, the mouth parts are modified into a piercing needle to eat fruit and suck up nectar. So they tend to have very pointy heads, whereas beetles have chewing mouth parts to eat plants and other insects, and they tend to have a rather flattened mouthpiece with mandibles so that they can grab and chew these plants. Now if we look at the wings, bugs have wings with membranes that are slightly thicker than those of beetles. Beetles, on the other hand, have four wings modified to form hard, leathery coverings, which we call elytra. Hindwing membranes fold under the elytra when they're not flying. Now when we're looking at the life cycle of these bugs and beetles, bugs have incomplete metamorphosis. In other words, the juveniles look like adults except they're smaller and don't have wings. But the beetles, on the other hand, they complete their metamorphosis. In other words, they have a larva with a hardened head, chewing mouth parts, and they usually have legs. And eventually they evolve into the full-blown beetle. Stink beetles also have a number of names, depending on the species or just where they're found and some of the common names that have been given to them by the local people that interact with them. So we can see them called pinnacate beetles, clown bugs, eliodes, desert stink bugs, or just stink bugs, even though these are beetles, remember. Now there's over 1,400 species within one of these families, and 120 of them are found west of the Mississippi. And of the eliodes, there's over 30 of those species. Some of the characteristics of these stink beetles is that they tend to walk with their front end lower and they raise their rear. Their bodies are long, they have six legs like most insects, and their size varies between half to one and a half inches long. They're usually black, but occasionally you have dark brown bodies. They're smooth, they can be rough or sort of a ribbed-like texture, they can even be hairy. And a few varieties with these hair-like structures almost have what looks like a tail, but it's usually the tip of their very long wings. Now some of this aimless walking is probably a sign of foraging for food odors that are similar to how a dog sniffs around for food and other odors as well. So it seems kind of random. Now walking around Northern California, just north of San Francisco, I found them in Marin Headlands. But they're also found in the deserts and in mountain areas. Now an interesting fact is that the smelliest varieties occur in the deserts, but the greatest diversity occurs in scrub and mountainous regions. And we can generally find them under logs or brush. Now most animals avoid contact with stink beetles due to the insect's ability to produce a stinky secretion, and we'll get to that in a minute. Grasshopper mice, however, have learned to get around this problem by grabbing the beetle, jamming its hindquarters into the sand, and eating it head first. Other animals that might prey on these stink beetles include burrowing owls, loggerhead shrikes, which is a variety of bird, and other skunks. Interesting how one skunk or stinky animal is attracted to another stinky animal. Now when threatened, they stand on their heads and they crouch down, bending their front legs down and extending their rear legs. Then they exude an oily, musty secretion which collects at the tip of the abdomen and spreads all over the end of their body. 
or they just eject a reddish brown to brownish secretion as a spray. Now some of these larger desert species can spray 10 to 20 inches and most species can spray multiple times if necessary. Now the spray isn't really painful unless of course you get it in your eyes or your mouth where it might have a burning sensation. It can actually also cause temporary blindness. So you don't want to get it on you. And it also doesn't really wash off easily. Now let's take a look at this spray chemistry where it's often used as a weapon of war by a lot of insects. Most of the 40,000 species of ground beetles use this technology. Many insects secrete quinones, but most that do so use the chemicals in small doses as hardening agents for the chitin in their exoskeleton. In other words, chitin is a calcium carbonate that helps to harden their shell. You might be familiar with bombardier beetles. These guys mix their quinone compounds with hydrogen peroxide in a sealed chamber in their abdomen. Then a chemical reaction between the two creates an acrid and very caustic steam. And that gives the beetle the ability to blast it at its foes. Now, it's interesting to note that a ladybug is not a bug. In fact, ladybugs are beetles. This is one of the examples of where names have been used inappropriately. Now, some of the stink bugs that we're more familiar with in the United States include the brown marmorated stink bug. Now, it's a crop pest, and it's generally harmless to humans, but it is a stinky bug. There's another one called a southern green stink bug, and this is a green vegetable bug by another name. Now, it's interesting to note that the World Health Organization has actually asked us to eat more insects. And this is mainly because of the heavy burden that cows and cattle place on the environment. Several South African ethnic groups actually consume stink bugs as a traditional food because it's high in protein. And it has some health benefits, even though they're anecdotal. Supposedly, it cures hangovers, and it also has some antifungal activity. Well, that just about wraps it up for our stinky friends right now. Hopefully you've learned something new about the difference between stink bugs and stink beetles. And who knows, maybe someday we'll get to say bon appetit. <laughs>